Oh my goodness, Esther, is that you? Vashti? Yeah. Oh my I goodness. can't believe I'm finally meeting you I after know. all this time. I've never met before and you're even prettier in person. Wow, what, what happened with you, Vashti? I heard terrible rumors. Where are you? I left and now I'm now I'm in Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania. That is pretty far from Shushan. Well, you look great. Are you comfortable over there? Oh, I'm very, very comfortable. It's much more comfortable than living in Shushan. I get to wear pants. Nice pants, by the way. Wow, those yeah. are snazzy. Yeah, they've got elephants on them and they even have pockets. Pockets, wow. I would love to hang out in some comfy clothes like that. I know it can be really, really tough being queen. It's not always comfortable. No. Well, what happened with you? I mean, I would love to hear your story. We're in the same book and I just don't know anything about really what happened with you. I know. And a lot of times other people tell my story and they get it wrong. So I'm going to share my story with you in a book that is called Queen Vashti's Comfy Pants which is by Leah Rachel Berkowitz and illustrated by Ruth Bennett. In her rumpus room, Queen Vashti sat in comfy pants and a funny hat. She played gin rummy all night long and sang her favorite silly song. And all Queen Vashti's friends were there in comfy pants and braided hair. They told Queen Vashti one by one, We've never had quite this much fun. How quiet it is without the boys. We're tired of their constant noise. Today we're free from itchy dresses and steering clear of spills and messes. Meanwhile, on the palace lawn, the king had danced from dusk till dawn. His party had stretched on for days. His mind was in a sugared haze. And now his friends were bored and blue. They plumb run out of things to do. We could play wiffle ball again, said all the king's advisors then. The king stood up and said, I know, let's make the queen put on a show. Queen Vashti is just down the hall. I'll send a messenger to call. So just a little after four, a knock rang out on Vashti's door. The messenger declared, I bring an urgent message from the king. Queen Vashti must at once come down in her finest dress and royal crown and dance for all the king's good friends until his royal party ends. Now hold it, Vashti scolded, freeze. Could he at least stay, say thanks or please? Queen Vashti found this very rude. She did not like his attitude. She told the messenger, please go and tell the king that I said no. And if you could, please do explain, I have my friends to entertain. I will not don my royal crown or change into a fancy gown. I am not in the mood to dance for I am in my comfy pants. The king was shocked to hear this news. How could Queen Vashti dare refuse? This was for him a crushing blow for no one ever told him no. The king's friends sneered and sat up straight. No king should have to sit and wait. Send word to Vashti's room and say, she must come down here right away. Make Vashti's friends come sing a tune and waltz beneath the harvest moon and pour our tea and bring us sweets while we recline on velvet seats. The messenger crept down the hall. He did not like this plan at all. He gently knocked on Vashti's door and whispered what the king asked for. Queen Vashti answered, sir, please go and tell the king that I said no. You cannot tell me what to do. I'm royal just as much as you. These sweets are for my friends and me. It's not our job to pour your tea. We are not in the mood to dance for we are in our comfy pants. The messenger slumped down the hall and braced himself against the wall. The king began to rage and fume and marched himself to Vashti's room. He pounded down Queen Vashti's door and stomped across the marble floor. The teacups trembled on their tray, but Vashti calmly looked away. 
You must come dance, the monarch cried, his face burned red with wounded pride, and I demand your friends come too, or I'll make mincemeat out of you. The queen's friends stood and hollered, no, we're happy here and we won't go. We are not in the mood to dance, for we are in our comfy pants. The king's face twisted in a frown. You're done here if you don't come down. Have you forgotten who I am? Your choice is simple, dance or scram. Queen Vashti said, then that is that. And she tipped the brim of her funny hat. You cannot tell us what to do, so king, I think we're done with you. Queen Vashti took her suitcase down. She packed her jewels and royal crown and sturdy shoes and potted plants and seven pairs of comfy pants. She told her friends, please come with me. There's so much world out there to see. Her friends responded one by one, together we'll have so much fun. So just a little after eight, the women stormed the palace gate. They left without a backward glance to conquer the world in their comfy pants. And that's the end of my story. Vashti, that's great. I'm I'm so glad to hear that that's how it ended. You have no idea the horrible things I was imagining when I got to the palace. I was just terrified. Well, you weren't you weren't excited to be queen at all. No, I did not want to be queen. That was not at all. I wanted to just stay home and have a nice quiet life. I had no desire to be queen. Oh, to be married to that guy. Yeah, yeah, it is It is not the easiest thing in the world. But how, how did you end up being queen if you didn't want to be? Oh, so let me share my story with you. So my Please. Glasses, we're all <laughs> over here. Queens wear glasses sometimes. So here's my story. Esther didn't dream of being queen. Written by Alison Opanonsky, illustrated by Valentina Belloni. Once upon a time, in a kingdom far, far away, I was an orphan girl who became queen. No, I'm not Cinderella. My name is Esther, and my story is not a fairy tale. I'll start again. Once upon a time, in a kingdom that stretched from India to Ethiopia, I was an orphan girl who never dreamed of being queen. Cousin Mordecai raised me in a small house near the palace. I spent my days digging in my garden, giggling with friends, daydreaming under the olive tree. I had a nice, quiet life. Until the day a royal guard pounded on our door. Oh no, he's probably delivering invitations to one of the king's rowdy parties. I hid in the back room. All pretty young women must come to the palace, the messenger told cousin Mordecai. The king needs to choose a new queen. I stifled a gasp. The rumors were true. The king had brought King had gotten rid of his queen because she had disobeyed his orders. He didn't sound like my idea of Prince Charming. I decided I wasn't entering his royal beauty contest. For three years, I avoided the patrols rounding up young women throughout the kingdom. But one spring morning, I just had to get out for a walk. I put on my ugliest dress, and messed up my hair. Hey there, a guard had spotted me. I bet the king would like to meet a nice girl like you. He hustled me into the royal carriage. The king won't want a poor orphan as queen, I protested. He'll decide whom he wants. I'm just following orders, he said. A few tears slipped down my cheeks as the carriage pulled away from the market. Cousin Mordecai dashed over and whispered, don't tell anyone who you are or where you're from. I trusted Cousin Mordecai, so I took his advice and didn't tell anyone at the palace I was Jewish but it felt strange to hide who I was. The guard took me to special chambers crowded with beautiful women from across the kingdom. We were supposed to spend our time getting primped, prettied, and perfumed. I lit my Shabbat candles in secret and whispered Hebrew prayers, hoping the king would pick someone else to be queen. Each day, one of us was taken to meet the king. While getting ready, she could ask the servants for anything to make herself more beautiful. This scarf brings out the color of my eyes. The king is sure to choose me. The diamond tiara is pretty, but I want to wear the crown. Don't I look lovely in this dress? 
No doubt I'll be the next queen. My turn came. The servant offered me a silk gown. I'd rather wear my own clothes, I said. An emerald necklace for a cape, he asked. No, thank you. How would you like your hair done? It's fine like this. A guard took me to the throne room. The king stared at my plain clothing. I kept my eyes down and refused to smile. I wasn't trying to impress him. I guess that impressed him. My new queen. Cinderella's fairy tale ends when she marries Prince Charming and they live happily ever after. But when I became queen, my story was only beginning. I moved into the fancy royal suite, but I missed my simple home. I even missed the chatter and laughter of the women's chambers. When I found out the women still waiting there were going to be kept as servants, I gave my first royal order. Let them go. I had to stay in the palace, but I could help others return home. I was lonely in the big cold palace. I tried making friends with the cook, but she just curtsied and called me, Your Highness. The gardener wouldn't let me get my hands dirty. At least cousin Mordechai came by every day to ask how I was doing. I hardly ever saw the new king. I hardly ever saw the king. He spent all his time with his favorite advisor, Haman, who was a real bully. Haman insisted that everyone bow to him, but cousin Mordechai refused. I watched proudly from the balcony when he told Haman, Jews don't bow to people. You'll be sorry, Haman threatened. There's no room in this kingdom for those who dishonor me. A few days later, cousin Mordechai came to the palace gate. I'd never seen him so upset. What's wrong, I asked. Haman has planned an attack against the Jews throughout the kingdom. We'll all be wiped out, men, women, children. He showed me a letter stamped with the king's seal. I trembled as I read the order. Why would the king agree to something so horrible? Haman bribed him. You must convince the king to stop this attack. Why me? The king got rid of his first queen. What if he gets angry at me too? You can save us, Esther. I believe in you. I wished I could go home and hide, but I knew I had to try. I didn't have a fairy godmother to wave a magic wand and solve my problem. For three days, I tried to work up the courage to approach the king. Finally, I tipped down the hallway, terrified. I thought about all the people counting on me. You're a queen now, I told myself, act like one. I stood up straight, took a deep breath and walked to the throne room. Esther, come in, the king said. I almost fainted with relief. Ask for anything, up to half my kingdom. I didn't want half his kingdom, but I couldn't blurt out that his favorite advisor was a scoundrel. I had to act carefully. Will you and Haman join me for dinner tonight? I asked. With pleasure. <clears throat> I brought out silver platters of stuffed grape leaves and almond pastries. What's on your mind, Esther? Ask me for anything. I wondered what to ask for. Did the king make Haman chief of a remote island? preferably one full of lions and surrounded by sharks? No, getting rid of Haman wasn't, getting Haman out of the way wasn't enough. I had to stop this terrible plot, but this didn't feel like the right time to expose Haman as a villain. Will you both come for dinner again tomorrow? I asked instead. The cook has a new recipe for pomegranate pumpkin parfait. We'd be honored, Haman grinned getting another royal invitation. The next evening when the king asked what I wanted, I spoke from my heart. Save my people, save me. Save you from whom? This wicked man. He plans to kill all the Jews in your kingdom. I am one of them. The king turned to Haman. You would harm my queen? Haman threw himself at my feet. Please, your highness, I didn't know. The next day, cousin Mordechai came to the palace gate waving a new order with the king's seal. Good news, the king has gotten rid of Haman and his plot has been foiled. I'd outwitted the bully. When I was a girl daydreaming in my garden, I never imagined I would do something like this. This calls for a celebration, I announced. We're still celebrating. Every year, my story is told at pouring parties. It's not a fairy tale, though it starts like one. Once upon a time, an orphan girl became queen and has the best ending. We all live happily ever after. So it looks like we both lived happily ever after. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm glad to 
fun to meet you. You know, we shouldn't let it be so long again next time. We should definitely get together. Absolutely. Well, maybe we could hang out on Purim sometime. I know this is going to sound really funny, but sometimes on Purim, I dress up as you. Oh, well, you could borrow my crown if you want. Oh, that would be wonderful. And I can send you a pair of my comfy pants. Oh, that's great. I could be you on Purim. That would be fun. Yeah, yeah. All right. Well, Purim's coming soon. Yes, let's wish everybody a Chag Sameach. <laughs> Chag Sameach. Happy Purim to everyone. Happy Purim. And let's show off our books, Queen Vashti's Comfy Pants. And... Esther didn't dream of being queen, and we hope that you'll go find them in your bookstore or your library, and that you will have a very, very happy, happy forum and happy reading. Bye.